To start, I'm a male and I was maybe nine years old when this happened. My family and I were in the middle of a great family road trip in the American Southwest. While we were driving through Colorado, we all needed to go to the bathroom and stretch our legs, so we decided to stop at the nearest gas station. We had just visited the Grand Canyon, so this tiny gas station we stopped at shortly afterward was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. At this point, neither my parents nor my two brothers were in any hurry to get back into the car for another day of driving through the desert. So after we had done our business, my parents stayed inside the gas station to look at the food and enjoy the free air conditioning, leaving my brothers and I to walk around the parking lot and stretch our legs. As I said before, this gas station was in the middle of nowhere, so I had assumed that we were the only ones there, but boy, was I wrong. I came to discover we were not alone after wandering away from the storefront to the side of the building where I saw a blue sedan parked still running and the farthest spot away from me. I gave it a passing glance and I assumed the car was owned by tourists like me. I kicked rocks against the wall of the building for a while, not really paying attention to the car until I eventually heard the sound of feet running towards me. I looked up to see a wild-haired man who kind of looked like Andrew WK, maybe a be making a beeline from the car to me, all while making eye con contact with me the entire time. I'll never forget the wild look in his eyes or the way his stare caused me to completely freeze up and grip the wall of the building as if the world had flipped upside down and I was at risk of falling off. I was only a little kid and I didn't really understand what was going on, but I knew this man could hurt me and he was coming right at me. I experienced a weird sensation where everything happened so fast, but at the same time, I felt through everything. I felt as everything was moving as at half speed. As I stood there frozen to the wall of the gas station, the wild-eyed man took what seemed like an eternity to finally reach me. As soon as he was within reaching distance from me, my heart beat. My heartbeat quickened as I braced myself for whatever was about to happen. It was at the climax of that moment when I felt a hand grab my shoulder from behind, breaking me out of the trance I was under. It was my brother grabbing me from behind to tell me that our parents were done browsing the snacks at the gas station and we were about to pack the car up again and leave. It was at that moment when my brother rounded the corner that caused the man to change his route at the last minute and run right past us. The man ran a lap around the parking lot and then hauled ass back to the car to the running car he came from and peeled out of the parking lot as fast as he could. It seemed as if no one in my family, not even my brother, who had grabbed me hadn't noticed the man or the car at all. As this blue sedan drove into the desert, I shrugged it off and piled back into the minivan and we went our way went on our way as if nothing had happened. I was so young that I didn't even think it think to mention it my family. So back when I was 13 in the summer before 8th grade, I went on a trip for a month to Venezuela, Puerto Rico with my then best friend. My first creeper encounter was when we went to Playa Agua. I think that's the name, it's a beach. First of all, it was beautiful, it looked like a postcard. And when this and while this isn't really re relevant, everyone wore thongs. Everyone. Though I guess it's somewhat relevant considering I and my friend were the only ones wearing normal bikinis, so you would think we wouldn't gather any attention. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Well, once we had our towel and stuff set up, we were going to go ahead and get in the water, so we took our shirts off and we were wearing a sw swimsuit underneath when we noticed a 40-something man staring at us. I'm pretty sure he wasn't a local, but another tourist like us. Wouldn't even look mature for our age. If anything, we we could have looked probably past for 11 year olds. And it was weird that he was staring at us given there was an abundance of girls our age who were wearing thong bikinis. And that in the sa that same vein, neither of us were particularly attractive. Maybe he liked us because we were ob obviously American. We glared at him and he kept on staring, we figured, fuck it, and took off her shirts and hauled ass to the water. Stupid, I know, but we were 13. Anyways, by the time we went back, he was gone. The second encounter was on the return trip back. We were waiting in the Miami airport for our connection back home when 
I wanted to get a drink. As I w was waiting in line, some guy, I think in his 20s, comes up behind me and whispers, I really like your butt. I just turned to give him a what the fuck look until he eventually shifted away. I decided to not get any drinks by myself after that. A few years ago, an ex and I decided to take a long, deserved vacation. We had been dating for a couple years, and for one reason or another, we hadn't ever managed to take any serious vacations together. This particular this particular year, I had an overabundance of vacation time saved up, since we never went anywhere for more than a day or so at a time. And time was running out for me to use it or lose it, so we decided to take a somewhat last-minute trip. Of course, neither of us had passports, since it was so last-minute. So we were looking at Florida, California, Hawaii, figured that was too far away, when I stumbled upon the fact that Puerto Rico doesn't require passports for U.S. citizens. Even better, it turned out my girlfriend knew someone who had a vacation rental home a couple blocks from the beach, so it was on. We got to Puerto Rico, San, Puerto Rico, San Juan was beautiful. We got our rental car and headed for our rental home. We opted for the faster, less scenic route in hopes of getting some beach time, and once we got the keys and set, got settled in. Not knowing anything about Puerto Rico, I will say it was a bit of a shock. Everything was pretty run down, McDonald's and BK everywhere. Most streets didn't have signs, neither of us spoke much more Spanish than Do Cerberus Por Favor, but the pictures of the rental property looked nice enough, so I wasn't that worried. It took about 30 to 40 minutes for us to reach our destination, and upon pulling up over the highway onto our neighborhood road, onto the na onto the neighborhood roads, we were immediately greeted with a multitude of burnt-out, run-down, abandoned homes. I was feel I was starting to feel like we had made a big mistake, and it only seemed to get worse. We got to the house, which happened to be on one of the nicer streets, only a few abandoned, run-down homes on this one, and it seems okay. The windows had bars on them, all the houses did, all the houses in the area did. The driveway had a gate, which we were told to make sure we lock at night and any time we were in the house. Part of the house was being renovated, so we got the studio. It was more like a, a one bedroom and uh, was $200 for the week since we knew the owner, so I couldn't complain too much. The man who showed us around didn't speak much English, but he was very sweet. Unfortunately, he said the AC was broken and he didn't think it would be fixed before we left. Needless to say, it was a great start to our first vacation. It wasn't a great start to our first vacation together, but we were determined to make the best, to make the most of it. We spent the next day or so exploring the immediate area. Took a long walk on the beach, hit up the local surf bar. Watched some of the local surfing, found a grocery store, tried to avoid Walmart, etc. All in all, it wasn't that bad. The surf bar, surf bar had live music on the weekends, NFL on Sunday, and was just a short walk. There was even a decent little skate spot around the corner, though I had neglected to bring my board. I think it was the third night we were out there. We had gone home after check. We got, got we had gone home late after checking out the rainforest. We took some dinner at the house, sat on, sat out on the patio listening to the cocky and just took it easy. Around 10 or 11 p.m. my girlfriend was checking email or something and I decided to take a walk down to the beach since it was a full moon. I grabbed a medalla light, one of those few beers available in Puerto Rico and headed out. As I mentioned, it was only a couple blocks and it seemed safe enough safe enough the past few nights. I did however lock the gate on my way out. Half a block from the house, I see someone on the other side of the street looking through a car. I didn't think much of it since we had the door open. I assumed it was his car, nothing suspicious, and kept walking. I was maybe a half block past him when I glanced back and noticed that he was standing next to the car curbside and he seemed to be staring at me. He was wearing a white t-shirt, so even 
even though he was in the shadows, I could still see him. It was, it seemed a bit creepy, but I figured he probably lived there and just didn't recognize me and, and was seeing what I was up to. I kept walking and made my way down to the beach about another block and a half away. There were, there was a small patch of some odd grass just before some rocks, then the beach. I stopped on the grass. I wasn't wearing shoes and I, it felt nice on my feet and stood under the palm trees for a moment, sipping my beer, just kind of looking around, talking it all in, taking it all in. That's when I happened to glance back the way I came again and noticed a man in a white sh t-shirt standing near the end of the street. I stood there for a moment, trying not to let him know that I had seen him or that I was feeling uneasy at his presence in any way, and he just stood there as well. I was sure it must be the same guy as I hadn't seen anyone else in the street on my walk down. I continued to sip my beer and he continued to standing up at the corner. He was standing completely out in the open, but it just seemed odd that he was just standing there. I didn't really want to look at directly at him so I could, couldn't really see like, I couldn't really tell what he was doing. At this point, I was becoming fairly uneasy. I've never been worried about walking around at night, but I've never been in a place quite like this either. The road that ran along the beach had had a few streetlights. The nearest one was just up the beach a bit, so I decided to make up to make my way towards it in hopes that whatever this guy was up to, up to it had nothing to do with me. I walked back to the sidewalk as I figured it was better to stay where it was somewhat lit and made my way over to the streetlight, all that while trying not to let on that I am aware of this guy's presence and getting a bit freaked out. I got to the streetlight and stopped. I took out my cell phone to try to seem as casual as I could and glanced around and didn't see him anymore. I, I breathed a sigh of relief and I figured I figured I had just been freaking myself out for no reason and decided to call my girlfriend to tell her what happened, what had happened and that I was on my way back. I called her and started walking back towards the street telling her that about, this guy, about this guy creeping on me and then I see him. At the end of the street there was an abandoned house. It had no roof, doors or windows, just walls and I could clearly see someone in a white t-shirt standing in the doorway. I stopped in my tracks. Oh shit, he's still there, I said. He was far enough away that he that he couldn't hear me, but when I stopped, I saw him take a step back into the dark house so I could no longer see him. At this point, my girlfriend was getting freaked out as well, so I turned around and started heading back towards the streetlight. There was another street up ahead, there's another street just uh, up, up a bit, and I figured I could take that uh, and loop back around to the house. I tried to walk as normally as possible, as to not let on what I that I was scared. I even paused for a moment near the street light and f and fanged and fiend looked at the ocean, at which point I could see that he had come out of the house and appeared to be walking towards me, my heart racing as I continu as I continued towards the next street. When I got to the corner I turned left. Looking over my shoulder, I could see that this guy was definitely coming down the sidewalk towards me. He didn't appear to be running, but he must have been walking fairly quickly because he had definitely gained some ground on me. I turned the corner, and once I was behind a house and out of sight, I told my girlfriend that I was hanging up and going to run. I ran pretty much as fast as I could and didn't look back. Of course, one of the houses on the street just happened to have some rather large dogs which began to bark wildly as I ran by which just about scared the shit out of me. I made it back to the house, unlocked the gate, and quickly locked it behind me. I looked around to see if anyone had seen me, but there was no, no one in sight. My girlfriend was pretty freaked out, so we locked the doors and shut the blinds and called it a night. I didn't have any more run-ins with any late-night creepers. The rest of that time, we were there and all and all, we ended up having a great vacation. It still gives me a little chill re recounting this story, though.